Hello, this is Rezorat from Rebecat, and in this video, I'm going to talk about Power BI service. What is it? Why do you need it? You are using Power BI Desktop, you are building your reports with it. So what is the service? What is the purpose of it? Do you really need it? Uh, there are a lot of discussions about there is something called Power BI accounts, licenses. Do you really need all of that and how they would work together? Let's check it out in this video. So the first thing you need to um, the first thing you need to understand about Power BI is that uh, it's a tool set. It's a serv uh, let's say it's a bunch of tools and services components working together, and not all of them are doing the same thing. They have different capabilities and different features. The one that is the most familiar is Power BI Desktop. Power BI Desktop is a application that you can go and download from the Power BI website or you can go to uh, Microsoft Store in your Windows 10, Windows 11 application and uh, operating system and download the application. It is totally free. You don't need to pay anything for it. You don't even need to have a Power BI account to use it. You can just uh, use it without any licenses or anything. Just connect to any data sources you want, build your reports. It's your report development tool or let's say the report authoring tool. You don't need anything else for authoring your report. Uh, so then why all of other things such as Power BI website, gateway, all of those other things. So let, let's talk about that. So let's say you created the report, you built the report. What is the next step after the report? When you created the report, then you want to show it to someone saying that, well, this is the report, this is the result, this is the data, because that is the whole purpose of the report. You built something, now uh, that data exploration or data visualization should be used for someone to make some decisions, informative decision based on that. So you are going to show it to somebody or share it with somebody. That is where we need to think about something else, another component, because if you use just the file generated in the Power BI desktop and you want to share that, those files are PBIX extension, that means that your users also need to have a Power BI desktop installed to see that. If you don't do that, if you take just screenshots of your Power BI report and share it with them, then you have to go to every single page and create a screenshot and send it to them. And it's not going to be interactive. The whole point of Power BI is to create interactive dashboards. They, they users won't be able to select slicers uh, and things like that and, um, and really interact with the report. They just see a bunch of screenshots. If you get them to install Power BI Desktop, uh, first thing is that not everyone can install Power BI Desktop. They might have an iPad or <clears throat> their phone. They cannot install Power BI Desktop in their phone. Um, so there is a limited, limited possibility. Even if they can install it, it's too much power. They might go and edit something and um, cause something to show a wrong value and then they come and blame you that your report is not working. So Power BI Desktop is not really a tool that you need that you use for sharing. It's a tool you use for creating the reports. So when you want to share it, you have to think about a hosting environment for Power BI. For Power BI, we have two types of hosting environments. When you create this report, you can host it on-premises locally in a server in the local domain, Let's say your company has some local servers, um, you just host it over there and then everyone in the company can use it. Or you can use cloud-based hosting environment. So the cloud-based hosting environment for Power BI is called Power BI Service, or some call it Power BI Website, it's the same thing. The on-premises hosting option for Power BI is called Power BI Report Server. For the report server, I have a separate video, go and check it out, but the service or the Power BI website is what I'm going to talk about in this video. So Power BI Service or Power BI website basically is the cloud-based hosting environment for Power BI. It's a Microsoft cloud-based hosting environment. So when it is Microsoft cloud-based hosting environment, that means it comes with all of those Microsoft cloud environment configuration. It uses Azure Active Directory behind the scene for managing users. It uses Office 365 for managing licenses, things around it. You have the user management capabilities like what we have 
in Office 365 and in Azure Active Directory. Every organization have different tenants and under tenants, we can have like workspaces as separate working environment for different teams, like a collaborative sharing options that we can have between the teams to share the content together and then create a package of that content, share it with the user. So it comes with a lot of features that you normally expect in a uh, in a hosting environment, in a place that you host your Power BI reports and share it with the users. And when you share it with the users, the users can just use a normal web browser to see the Power BI content, or they might even install Power BI in their phone and then a Power BI app in their phone. And then using that, they can see these reports. When your reports are hosted in Power BI service, they can easily do that. So Power BI service is basically that environment with all of these features. However, it's not just that. It is a little bit more than that. I'm going to talk about it. Uh, the first step to have your report into the Power BI service is, of course, publish it. In the Power BI desktop, we have this publish button that you can use to publish your report into the service. It's a very easy, simple process to do. You can even go to the Power BI website, app.powerbi.com, and upload your Power BI file over there. Uh, if you used... Um, on-premises data sources in your file, such as an Excel file in a shared folder in a local network drive or a SQL server on a local domain uh, SQL server, then you have to set up a gateway to create the connection from Power BI service to those uh, on-premises data sources. If your data sources are cloud-based data sources, such as Google Analytics, Azure um, Analysis Services, Azure SQL Database, then you don't need uh, gateway to get your data sets refreshed. Uh, in Power BI mm, website, to get access to this environment, you need to have licenses. And there are different types of licenses. These are in two main categories. Uh, they are either capacity-based licensing or they are uh, user-based licensing. You would definitely need to have any of these licenses. Even if it is a free license, you definitely need to have these to be able to access to the Power BI website to be able to log in. The capacity-based licensing is normally good for enterprise customers with um, multiple hundreds of, uh, on, let's say, 500, 600 of users or thousands of users. Uh, they would have a dedicated capacity that they can host their reports on it. It would have a different per performance aspects on it, can be enhanced specifically for their environment and things like that. And we have also user-based licensing, which is for a small, smaller mm, user area or or like small or mid scale businesses, but uh, but you also would need some of these user based licensing even if you are using premium capacity licensing as well. Like if you are if you got a premium capacity for your environment, you might need some pro licenses for your developers to set up uh, the Power BI reports, deploy it, and and things around it. Now this is not a video about licensing. That is a whole big discussion itself. I have a separate video for that. Go and check it out. But the main thing is that Power BI website is kind of bundled with those licensing options. So you have to go and choose what is the right licensing option for you. Now, Power BI service or Power BI website is not just for hosting reports. It is much more than that. Uh, at first, it created as a hosting environment for the reports, but then Microsoft gradually brought new um, components, new tools, new features in it. Nowadays, we have a lot of things in the Power BI service that is not necessarily related to the report. We have data flow, shared data set, data mart. I'm going to talk about uh, these uh, very briefly, what they are, just in case you want to know, but use the links down in the description below to learn more about them because I have different videos and articles about each of these. Uh, so the first one is template app. Let's say you want to create a report from your Google Analytics account. And instead of going and building the report from scratch, creating every visualization, creating the data model, tables, relationships, calculations, somebody in another organization, in another company created that and thought that this perhaps is useful for others. So uh, that person created something called template app. Template app is a pre-built Power BI application. 
um, that you can use. Some of these are free, some of these are paid, of course. Uh, you have to pay for it. Uh, but the point is that then if I'm going to use that Google Analytics, I don't have to reinvent the wheel and do all of those things myself. I just use that template app. I enter my credential to my Google Analytics account and it creates that connection. It builds the report for me in just a few seconds. I would use that report, right? That is called template app which is one of the features of the Power BI service. Another thing is app. When I created content in my organization, let's say Power BI reports, dashboards, everything, now I want to share it with my users. I can bundle that into apps. I can have an app for HR reports, another app for sales report, another app for purchasing report, different app for different audience. I can design things such as this is the um, this is how this app looks like when people come to this. This is their background color. This is um, some of the links that can be helpful. This is the landing page when they would see it, the icon that they would see it. All of these can be configured over there. You can also use workspaces. Workspaces is like a shared folder, let's say, created to uh, have a collaborative environment between uh, multiple Power BI developers, me, Jack, John, let's say we are all building Power BI reports. We need an environment so that we can publish our reports over there. We can peer review each other's work. I can go and edit what Jack did. John can go and edit what uh, I did, Think, things like that. And then once we are ready, we can deploy it into uh, other, um, let's say, folders, other environments, build an app on top of it to share with the users. These are called workspaces, which are part of the Power BI service. Dataflow is ETL in cloud, based on Power Query engine. Using Dataflow, we can get, uh, we can connect to data sources, do some data transformation using Power Query, load the result into Azure Data Lake storage, which is part of Power BI service. You don't pay for that separately. Uh, and then you can reuse that in multiple Power BI files in your Power BI files instead of in creating a product dimension in each of these and copying this across your files, you can just do that in a data flow as a shared place, as a one single ETL layer, and then in different Power BI files, you can go and get data from it. That would make your uh, Power BI implementation much better in terms of architecture because it would be separated layer for ETL and you can reuse your work. Same situation for the shared data set. Shared data set is where you can use the data set that you just published to the Power BI website and create multiple reports from it. These are thin reports. These are not necessarily having their data, the, their own data set. They are using the shared uh, one shared data set that the benefit of that is, of course, you are reusing all the calculations, DAX calculations, relationships, modelings that you have done. You don't have to redo it or copy it. As a result, you wouldn't have redundant copies of the same thing. You have one single version of truth, which is, um, in this case, your layer of the data modeling. These are important bits and pieces in multi-layer architecture for Power BI, which I explained in another video. Data Mart is the newest component of Power BI in this category that uh, not only gives you uh, Azure SQL database uh, storage for these data, but it also brings the whole unified experience of creating all the data model inside the Power BI uh, web platform. So in, this is the next generation of how we are going to build Power BI data sets and reports in the future. You probably won't need Power BI desktop anymore in the future. You are going to build everything in the website in, in a unified place. You do your data flow, data sets, relationships, role-level security, incremental refresh, all of that in one place. This is also one of the features of Power BI service. Some of these features um, you have to have Premium licensing, by the way. Deployment pipeline is another uh, one of the features that we have in the Power BI service. When you have different environments, such as a test environment, a developer environment, and a user environment, and you have content in each of these, you can compare the content that you have in your dev environment with the user with the user or let's say live environment compare these you see for example this report is not yet published there now let's go get it and publish it over there it manages the whole process much easy and you can roll back your changes you can see the history of your changes it's a deployment process made easy basically 
dashboard is uh, another visualization element in Power BI in addition to the report. Report is more like an interactive uh, visualization uh, option in Power BI. Dashboard is a layer on top of it where you have multiple reports and you want to have like a holistic view of all of those data in one place that automatically get refreshed as soon as the data behind the scene is getting refreshed. You might get, you might use it to put it on a screen on a wall to see it, or you might want to use it to see the real time changes. Uh, that is a Power BI service only element. You cannot do that in Power BI desktop and we won't have it in Power BI report server. Power BI metrics is a way that we can analyze KPI, key performance indicators, data, scorecards, some metrics that are really important for our business. We want to compare this value, for example, um, the sales year to date with the uh, with the target that we have, how are we on the track, show it on a trend line, uh, are we on track, are we behind, show it based on the status, come with some color coding, all of these can be configured. And the good thing is that this can use a Power BI dataset as a source. Uh, content certification is a governance feature added inside the Power BI service environment. Uh, because you have so many contents after a while in Power BI environment, your users might get lost that what dataset is good to use. There are like three different sales dataset. Which one should I use? You can have a team of people who go and certify these contents. They go and check it, run some tests, go through some standards procedure and say, well, this is what we have tested and we certify that this is a good data set to use and mark it as a certified. You can choose who is able to certify the data set. And this would, of course, make the whole adoption of Power BI in your organization easier. Because you have so many data related elements in Power BI, data lineage is another useful thing in Power BI. You look, you look at the report, you wonder where the data of this report is coming from. Where is the data set for that? What ETL data flow this is coming from and what data source this is coming from. Data lineage will show you, you the lineage of these from the report all the way to the source. However, this is a still work in progress. Some specific scenarios is not supported. So um, stay tuned for that and read more around that subject to get to know more about uh, data lineage. So as a um, summary, uh, Power BI service is a hosting environment, cloud-based hosting environment for Power BI service, but it comes with so many features, so many uh, capabilities that these days, most of the Power BI implementations are using Power BI service anyway, not just for the cloud-based hosting capabilities of that, but because of all of other things that comes with it, the data flow, the shared data set, these days data mart, deployment pipeline, the lineage, certification, Power BI metrics, dashboard, many of these uh, can be really helpful in adoption of Power BI in your organization. In majority of the Power BI implementation, I have seen Power BI service has been used and um, different aspects of it has been used. Uh, if you use Power BI service or if you use Power BI report server, let me know in the comments below. I would like to hear more about how do you use it. I run trainings and consulting on Power BI, so get in touch with me if you have any questions in Power BI and I hope you like this video. Until the next video, bye.